Let's take a listen to a few clips that will set the tone for our conversation this morning. Uh, here's the, uh, uh, you know, the Lands and Natural Resources Minister, Samuel Abujinapo, on the issue of Galamse. Take a listen. The comments and interventions of TUC, UTAC, professional bodies, unions, journalists, and Ghanaians are not to be dismissed. That's where I think we should begin from. We should listen to them. And those are uh, views that they have uh, analyzed and, and put forward. And I intend to engage various professional bodies, including TUCs. And I believe through that, we may be able to polish our policy and our approach in dealing with this matter. And we will do so. Now, Forest reserves, small-scale mining is not permitted in forest reserves. So the question about illegal small-scale mining in forest reserves, I think it is more about having the right mechanism to prevent such illegalities in our forest reserves. The law doesn't permit small-scale mining in forest reserves declare a state of emergency that is within the bosom of the president, but I find that to be a far-reaching, um, really, uh, you know, a, a very draconian measure to take. And so we will engage them, and we will have this conversation. And I believe out of that, we may be able to come up with some consensus which we can, we can work with. We indicated that the president should establish a specific cost for Galamse. Because you see, I have already told you, this Galamse nonsense must stop. And until we start punishing the people involved, they will take us for granted. The people involved in Galamse, they are taking our collective good for granted. They are taking our very survival for granted. They are taking our very life for granted. They don't care whether we live or die. They don't care. And that is how we are there to be at and there should be a call to deal with this specific thing. And we have also said, the law that gave them the mandate to be doing this thing, that law should be revoked. And we said, at this particular point in time where we are, because we are between life and death, and, the, and by this time we are counting only minutes, because at, at any time in moment, people are getting cancers and all that. So we are saying that the law should be put aside, and all oh, the, whether you have a, whether you have certificate, whether you have a permit, whatever, all mining should be put on hold because it is a state of emergency. So let nobody tempt us. And I repeat, for the minister, we have great respect for him, but this matter is not a ministerial matter. And I repeat, this matter is not a ministerial matter. When the president was talking, he spoke on authority, put it in his own presidency on the line. It was not a ministerial job that was put on the line. It was not an MP seat that was put on the line. It is a presidential job that was put on the line. So the minister cannot can this time come and tell us what he has. As for the letter that he has written, we decline his invitation. We decline his invitation. We will not even go there at all. We are dealing with, or we are engaging our own president, His Excellency. September ending, we want to hear something from him. And good news, of course. And the good news is that state of emergency should be declared. The courts, there should be processes to put them in place. The law giving them mandate to put the mining in place should be revoked. And aside that one, all mining activities in the forest areas, among other, you know, all mining activities must cease. And then we can take it out from there. We hope these things will be granted by September ending, so that our country will rise again, so that our children can go to school. Alfred, I am very, 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 very sad this evening. And even my tears want to come out because of the things I went to Prague to see, because of the things I went to bring to see anytime I shed tears, anytime I see them. I am really shocked at the minister that he is telling us that they are giving some people to go and to go and enforce what. At this time of the day, when the children are dying and people are dying, ah, please, they should take us serious. 
Alfred, my tears are coming out. I can't help it because of I go around every day. I see her. Sesi anko brensu yo no. Eni yo. Oshwe de wo insu yo ni a ye ya. Eni yo kura. Insu yo we ye se di gub galam we mwa. Tank we mwa ye to alam. Ten si dis e du gum. Ase ne ni na abe ye se. Eni ni ye se ye. Eni ye de mek se a cheke. Emma gula man yi na ye diyo. Ebi kwa takwa de a kre kumas be biya gana fane yi na. Ebi anu webi kwa ho. Na imaje se kemikas kompe wo sumu nye izi. Ya sa pa alam ten si di. E di ogu mensu yone eni abe ye se. Ase ne de mek se a cheke. A ban ye slaw. Bwa wo kompe bi ni gula man asase so. Insu yo we ebi anu swane ye se eno. Eno ebi na minu mwyo. A ban. Imaje se kemikas abe kwa mi muno. Se sa o ba kwa pe be chame skana. A yi sa o demi kwa tu de mwa wa yi ya. A ban ye blow. Ye se mo. E ha yesu ya kamo ya tu abadi bi. Yesu wa machana fwe begu ya sase so. E se yesu yo. E se se ye koko. A se abe si ye japa diye ni na. Yeah, those are the sound clips that will set the tone for our conversation this morning. Uh, if you just joined us, this is Big Issue on New Day. My name is Kemeni Amano. I'll quickly introduce uh, my panelists for today. It's an all-women, powerful women, who will be discussing the issue of Golamse. I'll start off from right opposite me, uh, Nana Ellen Amadakon, uh, who is a Deko. Ah, indeed. Uh, Ellen Amadeko, who is a member of the NPP communications team. And then uh, to my immediate right is Nanaya Chepim Jantua, who is CPP former general secretary. And to my far right is Beatrice Anas, she's spokesperson for the John Mahama campaign. Deputy Ladies, excuse me. Deputy. Deputy spokesperson. I apologize to both of you. Uh, it looks like my... Uh, what would they say? Nomenclature today is all over the place. But let's talk about the most important thing. I want to start with you, Ellen, uh, because the pressure has been at your doorstep as the, you know, the governing party. Talk to us about how you, the party is viewing all of these things that are happening right now. Good morning to our viewers. Good morning to everybody here. Galamse has been an issue for years. And somewhat personally, let me go more on the personal line. Uh, we've been mining gold in Ghana for more than 400 years. I honestly do not see why our ancestors did not think it wise to go onto our rivers and our waters. But the current generation thinks that it is good to go on our rivers and our waters. Uh -huh. Taking our gold from our rivers and our waters did not start. It started like, like the past 20 years. And it's been an ongoing fight. And that's what I want us to underline. It is an ongoing fight. It is not a one, one time event. Then we have to look at who are those on the rivers. As for Galamse or people doing illegal mining outside the rivers, yes, it's a menace, but it's more manageable. Our current problem is those who have decided to go on our rivers. Personally, left to me, I believe that we should shoot everybody, shoot and kill anybody we see on our river mining but unfortunately that is my view and we have laws and we have um we, we are ruled by laws you cannot just get up and go shooting people mm. but i mean that's the extent to which we have all decided to pollute the environment i saw the the last video that you played about the woman complaining about the water and then her complaint was that uh, the chinese have taken over our rivers and their mining. My first question is, who brought those Chinese there? As much as government should be on it, and government is on it, how did those people get in there? So all the actors in this whole matter, government, our chiefs, and then us as a people, and the people in the community, we should all be asking ourselves questions. As a government, since Nana Doda Kwa took over uh, 2017, and what he came to meet in the Galamse and, and, and the mining sector. It was total chaos. Total much, chaos. Much more than what we are seeing oh, yes. today. Those were the times when you were going to the western region. You get to the Ankuba River, right by the roadside. And you see chamfines on the river. And that is what informed all the military, the, the decision to send the military mm -hmm. out there to go clear the rivers. And the report that came, that even in the middle of the night, we have Ghanaians and foreigners sitting on our rivers and mining. Mm. I am not saying that we've been able to clear everything. 
But definitely, when you look at what happened before we took over, this president has done everything and is still doing everything possible to make sure that we clear our waters. But we cannot do it alone. Government cannot do it alone. We need the, the input of everybody. Uh, TUC and organized neighbor are telling us that they, are, they, want, um, they want a declaration of what, 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 what were the words? A state, the of, state emergency. of emergency mm -hmm. in areas where Galamse is going. My first question is Galamse has been around for 20 years. What has necessitated their. I, I, wish, no I, wish, I wish I could read their. I haven't read their statement yet. Uh, I mean, I but, 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 but then you don't need to but, read their statement. But it's I mean, got worse. The, and fact they say that that it's got, the fact that it's got worse. In their estimation, they think that it has gotten worse, so we should declare a state of emergency. Mm -hmm. Well, it's their opinion, but the government and our state apparatus and our security apparatus, I'm sure they'll look at it and see if we have to do it. But with them giving timelines and, 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 um, and ultimatums, well, uh, let's see how that goes. But I, I don't think that we have gotten to the stage where we need to declare mm. a state of emergency. Well, we'll I have seen the, the response by the minister yesterday. I, I've read a bit of it. And I, I think that the mechanisms that have been put in place, we should rather enforce it and get the job done. But declaring a state of emergency mm. at this time, well, it's up to the state apparatus to see. The, uh, they, they well, I'm going to come that. back to you. Let me take some uh, initial thoughts also from Beatrice. Beatrice, uh, you, your thoughts on the situation, uh, uh, you know. Yeah, good morning, Kemeni, and, and good morning to our cherished viewers. I, before I express my thoughts on this, I want to say a very big thank you to the people of the Bono East and the Bono regions. We came back yesterday after spending 11 days uh -huh. in these regions <coughs> campaigning and selling our policies. And it's, it's quite sad that while the NDC was in the Bono East and the Bono regions telling the people on what we can do to revive the dead cocoa industries and how farmlands are being used for galamse purposes. We have to come back to Accra and talk about government duplicity and complicity in the galamse fight. You know, let's not pretend and means words as if there are some people doing galamse. And then the expectation is that governments will be fighting those people. The fact is that government is doing galamse. And you cannot expect government to fight government. Where does it happen? Why are we pretending? Why are we being sanctimonious? Why are we making it look like this whole fight against Galamse is some unscrupulous citizen somewhere and, and citizens are doing something and government is fighting? Government is the Galamse campaign itself. From the presidency to the cleaner in the MPP, they are engaged in Galamse. So let's not make it look like there is a fight against Galamse. That sounds like you're saying everybody in government. Everybody in government is complicit from the presidency to the very last person in the MPP. And, and I can show you. So let, let, me, let, me, let me show you. Please do. First of all, this government did not set out to fight Galamse. This government had no intention, howsoever described, to fight Galamse. And so it's, it's, it's a form of gaslighting. If anybody will want us to believe that this government started a fight against Galamse, the fight against Galamse was started by the media. We've all, we were all in this country in 2017. This government did not set out to fight Galamse. When the media started the fight against Galamse, and began to uncover that the people behind Galamse are political appointees of this government and party executives of the MPP. To cover up for the shame, the government then said that we needed to do something. And so they began to put up appearances as if they were fighting Galamse. And unfortunately, Major Muhammad lost his life 
believing that government was indeed fighting Galamse. We have a very good source of reference, which is the professor from Paul Watson's report, uh -huh. which is the interministerial committee that was formed as a sham to fight the Galamse. In that report, Kemeni, on page three of that report, Professor Frempon Watson's committee stated that as a committee responsible for fighting Galamse, what they had found was that as far back as 2018, who was in government in 2018, less than two years of this government being in power, they had given mining leases to companies to mine in all 47 forests. It's on page three. Please, let's reference and read. So the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources, the Forestry Commission, gave mining leases to companies to mine in the 47 forest reserves. The forest reserve that President Rawlings came to meet. The forest reserve that President Kufuo, even an MPP presidency, came to meet. The forest reserve that President Mills came to meet and President Mahama came to meet. They thought that everybody was, excuse me to say, stupid. They are so wise, and so they gave mining leases to companies. And you see, assuming these were even established companies who can engage in reclamation or that, we can even have some decent discussion. Some of these companies did not even have mining leases, like Akunta Mining. That went to the Tamubrim Forest Reserve and started mining. When the issue came up, the minister responsible said that Akunta Mining had no such lease and Akunta Mining is owned by the Ashanti Regional Chairman of the MPP, Chairman Moon to me. He is a very known face. So who is government fighting? You are asking Nanado to go and fight because even before we could even settle on the matter, the president came out to say that Akunta Mining had not done anything illegal. And the teacher union, NAT, and all these people want government to fight who? Government wants to fight government. Kemeni, we'll, we'll, we'll come to the let's, fight right now. You see, let's not pretend about this. Until we call names out, until we come together as a people and say that never have we experienced political leadership actively involved in Galamse. We will come here every morning. Indeed. We will bring NDC MPP rep. We will be having this discussion. And you and I, we will buy the Fanti Kenke from Central Region that was made from that water we saw. Mm. And we will all die. I pray that the death start from the right people. We are tired. Is it not it's tiring? It's too early for that, this Beatrice. Week, see, this Beatrice. week, every day on your show, you've been discussing Galamse. Exactly. Why are we pretending we don't know the root cause? I mean, we, Why I are we just asking questions and making it look like this is just a political discussion? We're adding it on to the pressure. It can't be a political discussion. We're, we're adding on, and it's not a political discussion. We're adding on to the pressure uh, that is, uh, you know, has reignited at this point. And Beatrice, I'm going to come back to you so that uh, you make a few more on this. But Nana, are you able to drink water confidently from your home? No, 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 I don't. You see, my dear. Me, I'm sad this morning. Good morning to your viewers. Good morning to everybody. When I was coming, I was so depressed. I didn't, when I saw the topic, I didn't even want to come. Because it is sad. Why are we discussing this? Why, why are we wasting resources to discuss such a matter? Because somebody has not done their work. The issue of equalization for me is very unnerving and, and it makes my blood boil. Because today MPP is in power. And if somebody didn't do it right, why are you not doing it right for us? Because you told us that you are going to do things right. That another government didn't do it right and you are going to do it right. So why are you not doing it right? For instance, if you woke up today and the pra and cobra brim, are clear, are we not going to be happy? Mm -hmm. Do you get me? So why are we always saying that somebody didn't do it right? So even what I have done, I have done better. 
But look at what we are seeing. We all eat Acheke. Me, I'm even scared because Acheke is my favorite. Look at what we are seeing. Mm -hmm. The woman had to use alum to clear the water. Even that, how much quantity of alum did she use? Because the chemical itself, if you, you use it beyond a certain limit, is also disastrous to your health. Indeed. Do you get me? Mm -hmm. Me, I'm not going back to um, Professor Fimpon, but we've spoken about it. The issue is that where was the TUC? Where were the CSUs all these years? Better late than never. There's nothing like better. They want us to die before, which is better late than never. Please, I beg you, which is better late than never? Government is spending money to green Ghana, green Ghana project. But in another vein, our environment is being devastated. Every time there, is, there are meetings, there is a talk shop, a rhetoric. The government is always talking. No action. You see, the TUC, I am even surprised that the TUC has given to a 30th September as the deadline. Why are they not doing it now? When it came to the hotels, what happened? When it came to the hotels, they were going to shut down the whole of Ghana. Why are they not using the same method? Because this is not something that is new. It has happened. It, I mean, it is ongoing. Mm -hmm. And if you want us to stop it, why don't you use the same method you use for the um, hotels, the sale of the SNIT hotels? Because why are you waiting? Well, what are you waiting for? Till the end of the month. It, well, g give government the opportunity to remedy. What opportunity or, or again? implement some remedies. My dear, me, I agree that there should be a ban on mining. Mm -hmm. Others are saying small scale mining, but there should be a ban, total mining ban. Mining completely? Mining completely. Why so? Because remember that there are businesses that are legally and ethically Please, mining. My dear, the gold down there is ours. It is ours, you know. And we ourselves should take charge of how it has to be mined. Mm -hmm. So there should be a total ban. So we take our time to look at contracts, to look at what other people are doing. We need to do that. Because if we don't put a total ban, we cannot dichotomize between which way somebody is encroaching on somebody's concession. We wouldn't know which is small scale, which is illegal, which is mm -hmm. legal. Because I agree to shoot, to kill. Because when we put a total ban, and all our mining areas and concessions are clear of human activity, then we know that anybody we find around the place is not supposed to be there. So then gradually, we work on bringing our forest back, we work on bringing our rivers mm. back. And if we have to look at the mining agreements with the bigger um, companies, then we look at it. For now, we are in a crisis state. For now, it is about public health. So it does not matter. Ghana is more important than any group of people. I see. Because this one cannot happen in any country, my dear. This cannot happen in any country. That our, our, our land is devastated like this. We don't even have good water to drink. We don't have good water to do anything. And we are just there. Nobody cares. You see, the president, what he's afraid of is pressure. So me, I believe that this TU, they should stop. TUC wasn't formed to be writing press releases. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they're formed, giving government time to, please, to I beg institute you, the ban. Please, TUC is formed to put pressure. That is the work of the union. The union is formed to put pressure, not to write press releases. I see. They are supposed to go out there. They are supposed to put action together, civil action. You see, maybe we have to import. I mean, and, and they have started. They have started. They, and we have to import the Kenyans to come and teach us how to do it. <laughs> yes, of course. So that it makes impact. This is not something that we have to joke with. I am telling you. It, it is not something that we have to joke with at all. And we are all joking with it. We are all politicizing. And this passage is this. No, that is not it. We are not supposed to politicize this. The life of Ghanaians are at stake. A doctor was on your program. And what was he saying? He said that we don't have time. If we are not careful, by 2030, mm. most Ghanaians will die of kidney diseases, of all manner of diseases. I see. Diseases that are going to compromise our organs, going to compromise our body. And, and we are sitting down when we are talking about press releases. CSOs, where, where are they? 
me, I don't believe in press releases when they come to such issues. We need to put action together. A group of people should go and see the president and speak to him that we are serious. It is not about press release. What shows that the president has even read this press release? That he even knows about what is going on. We should find time and go to political parties, everybody. This one is not about NDC, MPP, CPP. It is about us, Ghana. All of us as a, as a whole should come together and ensure that this devastating effect has to be stopped mm. immediately. Indeed. I, I'll take that conversation now to Ellen. Ellen, uh, I know you have a lot of reactions to some of the things that we've heard so far. But while you're doing that, I, I want to find out from you, when you say that uh, you know, there are steps already being implemented and that they need to be enforced, who is supposed to be doing that? Is it not your government? Yes, and that's why the government is doing it. And minister says that they are going to argument Augmented. It doesn't mean that government have stopped fighting Galamsi. All this while that we haven't spoken about it. The last time we had such a conversation was about a year and a half, two years ago, when government, I mean, at the CSOs also brought it up. During all that time, government has been fighting it. And so it tells you the complexity and how diverse and and so many issues are involved in the uh -huh. fight against that Galamse. I mean, it's I mean not issues about, like what? Is it the case that the steps are not working because the situation has only got worse? It's got to the point where... The point where... is, I keep on asking, it's gotten worse uh -huh. by, by, by what um, barometer? Well, because comparatively, uh -huh. when you check year on year, let's even start from 2015, when um, the, the, the then government led by the current flag bearer of the NDC, he set up an interministerial committee. He also did set up one. Mm -hmm. And in fact, at the end of the three years supposed fight that they were also supposed to have, they gave up. The minister went on Joy FM, gave up, and said that he, he has lost the fight. Um, I think the minister was either Mr. Mahama Yariga, or I'll have to check the name, but one of them gave up. So it should tell you that it has been a continuous thing that has been around. This government has not given up. Our Minister of Lands and Natural Resources have not come to tell all of us like that he has, he has given up. Because if the, 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 the sort of energy, the sort of money, the sort of um, force that has gone into even making sure that some of these people are even sent to court. The last time I checked, the Attorney General at the Bar Conference did mention, when I listened to him, uh -huh. that they have over 400 cases in court in relation to Galam Singh. I keep on saying that it is not just a one-man fight. It is not just a government fight. All of us are supposed to support the efforts of the government. There are over 480 people who are standing trials. But, see, some see, have but gone, perhaps that's the problem. Some have gone who to are jail. The people? Some, well, who, who I think we, we need the, the, the list of those people. The Attorney General no, can, can, already guess can that, provide us with, with them. We, we can uh, already let me, guess. let me finish my point. Let no, no, me, no, no, my let me point. ask a question while you're finishing that point. We can already guess that the over 800 people who have gone to court are the people at the bottom of the pyramid. You can guess. And that, absolutely. Because and, uh, uh, and that they're real people. Do you have their names? No, I'm saying. Of the people who are in court? No, no, Ella, let me finish. I'm saying that we can guess that the over 800 people are the people at the bottom of the pyramid because even while they are in court, mm -hmm. Galamse is still going on confidently but and blatantly. Is going and, on... and we can compare that our water has got murkier over the years. I don't think so. Really? I don't have think so. Have you seen the prowl? I, have, prow I don't think the, the, the water has gotten murkier. I believe that, yes, people are mining mm -hmm. on the rivers. Let's agree on that. But when you tell me that the people who are in court, are uh, the people who are the lower skilled people. What are your facts? Because, because, yeah, because you don't have, as you said, because, you don't have the names. Because if we have, and then the, if point we is, have the actual is, campaigns is, no, no, let me, let, me, let me finish. This is a crime, or the, the fight against Galamse is a perpetual fight. Mm -hmm. We have people who are always getting into it. And remember, these are not legal minors. They are not legal. The, the people who are actually doing this are people who do not have licenses. They haven't gone to get any uh, um, uh, concessions. They just get up one day, pick up their stuff, and they are in some, uh, a certain place that they think there's gold, and they are picking gold. So when you tell me that the people in court are the lower people, how do you know? Because when we move one group, another group gets in. And that is why I'm saying that all of us should join in that fight. When this government has put people in jail for doing galamsey, and you have somebody who wants to come into power who tells us that when I come, I'll release those people. Then what happens to the fight? 
So the question you should be asking us, because we are going for an election in less than 85 days, in about 85 days, both political parties, what are you doing? What are your measures? Because definitely if government had given up on the fight like they did in 2015, 2016, by now I'm sure that all our waters would have been overrun. But you do I'm realize not saying that, that what is, in 2015, 2016, that our river wasn't this bad. Who said it our wasn't rivers, this bad? Our rivers were, you can tell from the map. Who, you can who compare. said you, it you wasn't can, this you bad? You can just go online and it was. It was worse. Because we had the chamfines actually sitting on it. Now people are actually going there to mine in the night. I mean, on the rivers. Because they know during the day, if they go, people and the police and the, 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 the whole team will be after them. Mm. So when you do tell me that it was better then, it wasn't any better. The point is that I believe that we have to work hard at it. But then you have to ask us, as political parties, what are your, what are your, your plans towards it? Because this is an ongoing fight. The MPP has said that when we come, we are going to continue with the fight. With what we have done, we are going to continue with it and put in measures to move these people who think that they have, and they are Ghanaians. Look, you cannot stop them, all of them, at once. We need to move them from the rivers to giving them properly, I mean, constituted areas to mine. When Anthony Anaya says that we should cancel mining totally, we both know that that's not possible. Because we have large-scale miners who have contracts with this government. They have mining leases, some running into hundreds of years. And it's not that this government that gave them those contracts. So what do we do with those huge large-scale mining, legal, what do we do with them? Then we have the, the medium-scale miners who also have contracts. Then we have the small-scale miners who have also gone through the system and they have their contracts. Then we have the galamseyers. The issue is with the galamseyers and how we are going to deal with them. So when you say we should totally stop mining, who, is, who are we stopping? Are we stopping the big ones, the medium-scale ones? Or the small mm. ones. So, so why is so the government my, not my, going? I mean, the ruling party not going after uh, the people who have been identified within the government as allegedly who, engaged and who have in, in government. Of evidence. Again, we, again, we don't want to go back to uh, the Frimpong Mansour report. We also Frimpong know that the Boateng, speaker, not Frimpong Boateng. Frimpong Boateng. and then we also know that the speaker had said in Parliament about how. He was very certain that there were people. So, speaker should give us were, the names of the people in Parliament in, but, who are doing mining. But, but you, you, you have. You have the mandate to be able to. We do not enforce, have the mandate enforce, to, uh, to enforce some of these. The things. government does not have the mandate to know what is in people's minds, or to know what speaker is saying. So the oh, speaker, no, but the, 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 the speaker, LA. I'm coming. The speaker of Parliament says that people in his, his parliamentarians, he knows some of them that are doing the mining. Mm -hmm. He should bring their names and let's go after them. Did he bring any names? So that's what we are doing. We are throwing accusations. The same thing with the Professor uh, from Paul Boateng report. Mm -hmm. People's names were mentioned. The special prosecutor was on them. They mm -hmm. actually had to go through investigations. Right. The special prosecutor brought a report. None of these people were found liable. There was no evidence to show that they were in their mining. So if you do know of top government officials, and you mention Akunta mining, Minerals Commission comes to tell us that they have, they have leases. They have they, correct they, mining. No, they, have, they have leases, but there was mm -hmm. one of the areas they were mining. So they I'm sure they, they, they had to go to the Minerals Commission to go and deal with that. But they, it is a legally constituted company, like <laughs> all other companies, that mine. Is there, so is, unless you say that because um, uh, Mr. Wun to me, being the chairman of the MPP in Ashanti region, and he, he was even mining when the NDC was in power. Chairman Wun Timi didn't start mining in 2017. Is there, is there anything His company has been around for more than 10, 15 years. So I'm not saying that the company cannot do anything bad, no. But we should investigate it if they do something bad. But you do not go around saying that Chairman Wun Timi is the one doing galamse. Is when there he anything, has, is there he has, he has wrong? Legal, legal, you, legal, legal, the legal grounds to do so. Is there, do you see anything wrong with the ruling parties, your party's handling of you know, the fight against Galamsey oh, at yeah, all. Because you issues. seem to be blaming well, everyone there, else. There are a lot of yourself. issues. There are a lot of issues with, 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 with the fight. Okay. Just like any other fight. Just like any other situation in this country. You're going to get people who would definitely not comply. Mm -hmm. And that's why there's the, the, there's, there's the law. And you go after those people. I but see. you also do not go after people without any evidence. I see. So the fact that my name has been mentioned that Ellen is supposed to be mining somewhere. Uh, Ellen is doing illegal mining. Let's put it but, that way. But you also and there's no proof that, that the LN is do it, the doing it, so I should given, be jailed for it. 
the NPP has not given any, the, you know, the public any confidence. NPP. Indeed. You haven't given the public any confidence in your ability to nip this in the bud. Despite all that How you are How are we going to nip doing, this in the what? bud? You, you nip something in the bud when it's it, just beginning. Indeed. This thing started how many indeed. years ago? I, I, well, so what are we nipping in the bud? No, it's no. a full-blown menace that we have to fight. You, so what are we nipping have, in the bud? You haven't given the Ghanaian people, the confidence that you, you have the capacity, the will, and the ability to well, be able to do this. I believe and, that... And we have so many examples. Like, but the, ND, the MPP continually appears to be in denial of the fact that you have failed the Ghanaian people on this. Well, the Ghanaian people gave a vote on, on 20, in 2020. And I believe that those who, who thought that we hadn't done well... It wasn't a referendum on the fight against no, Galamse. And there has not been a referendum on the fight against indeed, Galamse indeed, in any then, government's time. What we experienced So today. I will not agree Ellen, with you. Ellen, no, no, Ellen, no, no, Ellen, no, where, do you live? where I live, where do you live, my water source is so com contaminated mm -hmm. that the Ghana Water Company could not give me water for weeks mm -hmm. because they say that the turbidity is too high for them. Mm -hmm. That is my lived experience. So. And, and, and it is your party in office that promised the Ghanaian people, including me. And I'm telling that, you that, that my you party, fight, you my party fight Galamse, has been you, fighting Galamse. You haven't done that. Anyway, my party has been fighting. No, no, you don't just move on like that. My party has been fighting Galamse. Uh -huh. My government has been fighting Galamse. But we have other people who say, who had the opportunity to fight it, they didn't fight it. Now they said they are coming back into power. You have not asked them questions about what are they going to do to make sure that they are able to fight it this time. We'll and then there. you are on my party business because for fighting, the party for, fighting for fighting the galaxy and telling me that I have failed when obviously I haven't because there's a situation I came to meet and I, I believe that this party has done better this government has done far 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 better at least we haven't given up on the fight we are still fighting it somebody threw up his hands in the air and gave up we'll move the conversation across Beatrice I think that it gets very sad when you listen to how government communicators treat this whole Galamse matter. It tells you how the government is even handling the issue. Kemeni, this government is the only government on record under one year to have given 10 companies the right to move to engage in mining in our forest reserves. In fact, to add to the impunity the Environmental Protection Agency, which is supposed to be protecting our environment, promulgated an LI, LI 2462, to further empower companies to go and mine in our forest reserve. Do we think that we are all dumb? That, that keep saying the same thing every day? Gaslight the people into believing what is not our reality, and some way, somehow, the MPP believe that the Ghanaian people are so stupid that we have accept the aversion. Did we not live in this country? There has always been galamse. That has not been the issue. Mm -hmm. We had river and is it Ancobria or whatever. The river Pra was not this. The river Birim or whatever was not this. We saw Tano that yes. Also. Tana was not this, and I have a video, I've even sent it to you, of the state of these rivers in 2016, at the time the NDC was exiting. And you know what has changed? In the past, those who used to do Galamse were poor people who were just using little, 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 little machines to do Galamse. And so what we were preaching against were the potential dangers it could possibly cause. What we have today are government officials who have stolen the state's resources so much, they cannot keep them in the bank, and certainly these days they can't keep them under their bed because of their mates. And they have to find ways of washing this money. Let me give you a typical example. The MPP National Women's Organizer has a mining concession. We only got to know when the excavators were seized. Now, if you go onto that concession, and you arrest the people working on the concession and you put them before court. All Kejem 4 has to do is to change the workers. And so that is why the NDC says that we will grant amnesty to the people who have been arrested because the real campaigns are some pine. Chairman to me, the presidency, Charles Nitekotego, are mentioning names. They can sue me. 
These names were mentioned in the Professor Frimpong Watson's report, mm -hmm. Professor Kwam, the PC for Duaben. These are the MPP people engaged in Galamse. And then we are making it look like the fight is not for all of us. When they get the proceeds and the filthy money, do they share it with us? When they get the proceeds from the filthy work, the illegal work they are doing, do not bring it to us to spend with them. It's a selection to even further confirm the duplicity of Dr. Baumia and all this. You know what they have done? Mm -hmm. Mekuduka, the man who has been consistently accused of engaging in Galamse, has been appointed as the campaign coordinator in charge of mining. Kemeni, we have been practicing democracy in Ghana from 1992. Have you ever seen any party appoint a campaign coordinator in charge of mining and mining communities? Where from this? They think that some way, somehow, Ghanaians are so daft and dumb that, I mean, let's just say anything and people accept. It's so irritating and annoying how everything else is falling apart. And now even our very lives are threatened. And, you know, I keep saying that, you see, it's not everything you can say on national television. If you, if you don't watch your demeanor well and you follow this MPP, you will say things. You see, these guys are so cruel and wicked that it's just about them. When the NDC came to power, the NDC added 77 million gallon daily production to our national water production. That is the record of the NDC. I can tell you the Accra, the Tashinwa desalination project, my hometown, the Insamam water project, the Atma, the Accra Tema metropolitan water project, and then the five water town project, the Barikese, so many water projects. Even that, President Mahama realized that we have not been where we have to be. In the president's hometown, where he was a minister and MP, he could never take water there. It took President Mahama to take water to Chebi. Excuse me to say, the people of Chebi were drinking from the ground. It took President Mahama, a man who has a heart and will not do things for mm. only people who vote for them. Right. Kevin, do you know what we are seeing today? The water production which President Mahama left behind. Even that they were producing at 70% capacity today, they can't even do 40%. The Ghana Water Company, and in the release by the TUC and the Alliance for Media College, they stated that in Chebi, where you couldn't take water to, the plants which President Mahama built for you because of Galam said they can't produce water. The people of Central Region cannot get water. The plants with the NDC built for them, you are destroying it. They cannot produce the water. Because of Galamse? Because of Galamse. The Ghana Water Company released and said that, Indeed. let us all rise and fight this Galamse. When did you see these things in 2016? Today, we are being told that if care is not taken by 2030, we have to be importing water. And in all these things, we are not scared. We are not worried. We should, we should be... I mean, we should be devastated as a people. And then we are being told that we have done better, better at the, And these are the people who want to upgrade. My goodness. What is happening? Very well. Uh, Nana, you've been quiet for a while. Uh, <laughs> you've been quiet for a while. Um, Ellen has made her point about, you know, look, they, they have done better than despite all that we have said. Uh, comparatively to the previous government, they have done better. Uh, the NDC, on the other hand, is also saying that there's no way that the evidence proves that the NPP has uh, done better than when they were in office. But we have a real problem, you know, at hand, Nana. Uh, what can we do about it right now? Because, again, uh, burning, burning mining entirely will sound very impossible in the immediacy. Please, I beg you, who is more important, your son or your dog? <laughs> I just want to find if your son is hungry and your dog is angry, who will you give food to? I'll, I'll answer me. <laughs> your son or your dog, who is more important? Is Ghana not more important than all these miners who have come as if they love this country and they carry our money, they repatriate capital, they repatriate profits, making our city weak? But I, I mean, can't, we mine, some... can't we mine these concessions on our own? I'm asking who is more important, your son or your dog? I mean, on the surface of things, for that, for there, that there's, question, there's nothing it, it, like it, it, there, Kamini, There's nothing like on the surface of anything. Excuse me, but this you know, country, the, the point I'm making is you that. see, this country belongs to us, and it is time we do accept that we have a nation that is ours, 
And this is what we have and nobody else can dictate to us. Till we start having that mentality, we'll have problems. Me, I always go back to the national anthem. It tells us to resist the rule of the oppressor. It tells us to have, I mean, boldness. You get me? So this is a menace that we are facing. Because of what? Because of the money, the patterns that we get from these mining companies against what they are carrying away. We should not be able to cancel their, their contracts for now and rationalize and sanitize the system. This is Ghana. Well, perhaps can because, you, can, because can you go there and are do... some of the miners who are ethical. Please, I am you saying know. we need to ban everything and have a total look at it. Even the contract, what, what, what is our interest in there? What, what percentage do we have in there? I mean, what is wrong if we do that? Can you go and do this in any country, in the UK, in the US, even in Kenya here? Look, the Chinese um, ambassador, somebody sent me a quote, whether it's true or not. But this man is saying that who brought the Chinese in this country? Who gave them a visa? Who allowed them to enter? Who showed them where the concessions are? And he asked the question, can you do this in South Africa? South Africa too has gold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> do you get me? South Africa has gold. You don't just get up and go and mine anywhere. That, does it also bring up the question of beyond the government's ability to do this? Mm -hmm. Or, or, you know, the fact that the government should have done this already in the last eight years. Now. Yes, yes. Uh, perhaps the people also need a cultural change. My dear, if government has commitment, government, that is why we have a government. Otherwise, eh, we will all be there and we'll be ruling ourselves. That is why we put the power, the sovereignty of this nation, we put it in a group of people that look after this property for us for a period of time. That is what we call democracy. Then if we are satisfied with you, we retain you. The people, if you leave them, will do whatever they like. They will, they will do whatever they like. That's why we have laws. We have committees. You see, at the fulcrum of what we are seeing is the fact that the government is not committed to dealing with the issue. No, but the MPP says that they have over 800 people. Who are these? Uh, eight, so I'm coming to who are these 800 people? Because you see, if you get to the root of your soul, then you can treat the soul. If you are diabetic and you have a soul on your leg, and you don't treat the symptom, the diabetes, the soul will still be there. So if you have these big people, faceless people, I mean, you see, I don't mention Akuntan mining and those, they, they, those ones, we know them. But the people who are faceless behind the scenes, that we do not know. We don't know their names. We don't know their nomenclature. We don't know anything about them. But they are the people behind the scenes. You see, because if you arrest those boys on the sites, they will go and look for other boys to come and mine. Because we have those people behind the scenes. The big wigs. Look, my dear Kemini. Six billion dollars worth of gold to 22 billion worth of gold, illegal gold, leave the shores of Ghana every year. Mm. Who carries them away? The boys in those uh, uh, um, fields, do they, have, do they have access to the international gold market? How does these things leave to the international gold market of Switzerland, uh, Germany, all over? Do they have access? They don't. So who is selling the gold to the world? Certainly bigger men who are doing this. Do you understand me? Mm -hmm. So these are the faceless people we should look at because if we are able to catch the big boys, it will stop. That is why we should put a total ban on everything. And we look at even contracts that we have for the big mining. Go to the mining areas of Boise, all these areas. Go and see how the place is devastated. Mm -hmm. What are they doing to help these towns uh -huh. with the gold that they are taking away? Who is even looking at what they are mining to take out? How much, if we, you see, if we're getting anything out of the gold that these people have come, the expatriates, and they are mining, why are we in, in, in IMF? Why are we going to IMF? If they are bringing us any money that is worth anything, mm -hmm. why are we in, in IMF? It means it is worth nothing. So there is no need for us to even adore it. We should cancel it and sit down and interrogate everything. Because you see, if His Excellency Baumia says that there's one billion ounces of gold in the ground, and that's, that is worth $10 trillion. 
then it means we have some gold. Mm. But who is mining the gold that we don't have money in this country? So that is the reason why we need to make sure we should do a closing season like they do for the, the, the fishing industry. We should close it and sit down and interrogate everything one by one. What we are doing is just ad hoc. We are just playing around. Because you see, people are interested. They are getting money for campaign, for politics. No, we need to close it because as far as we are in IMF, as far as we are all, always uh, getting money from World Bank patents and all that grants, it means that the mining that is being done by the expatriates is of no use to us. So we need to close everything. I this see. is our country, Ghana. Kemini, before I learn, the LI 2462, it was passed in 2022. We had the hung parliament in 2022, right? Mm -hmm. Laws are not passed by the roadside. So who passed this law? Who allowed this law to go through? So we see we are blaming everybody, leaving parliament the gatekeeper. Parliament is Ghana. That is the representation of Ghana. Mm -hmm. And there are, are people who are out there to protect us. Some of the MPs who are there, there are MPs in some of these areas where the environment has been devastated, where right. there is no clean water. But who passed this law? The first question we should ask is who allowed this law to pass through? LI2462, who did it? And they have to be responsible. Do you get me? They have to be responsible because you, the parliamentarians, as they sit there, they have their constituents also being affected. The people who voted Indeed. for them. And I mean, I have spoken to a few of them who have made the point that, look, our hands are tied. Uh, there's very little that we are able to do about the situation, apart from asking questions of, you know, what is happening. But then again, you make a point about this ally. And I think I've also heard the Minerals Commission explain mm -hmm. uh, that the, the law does not necessarily, you know, talk about a... Forest reserves, yes. but then there are greats of this, mm -hmm. and a few of them are actually protected. And so, for those who have been given uh, those mining leases, those areas are not under those that are protected. But perhaps we'll get the Minerals Commission to explain that uh, a bit more later. But uh, quickly to Beatrice, Beatrice, you made a point, and and you know, for the purpose of our conversation today, I just want us to detach the two issues. When you mentioned the issue of uh, you know people in government who are looting. And then you know, washing their money by Galam. So you mentioned Kate's Kate's name, no, and, I, I, and yes, and I yes, wanted us to detach see, the two issues. You see, I'm saying that yeah. When you want to fight a fight such as this, the approach this government is using is wrong. I give an example of the National Women's Organizer. Would the party be able to fight the National Women's Organizer, mm. who until her excavators were seized? We didn't know what's into mining. No, no, I get that. Yes. I'm just saying that in the progression of your, yes. your thoughts. I would, mentioned that would... before. I said that, yes. see, there are I'm lots just, of... I'm, for the yes, purpose of yes. our viewers, there are we are just detaching. There are lots of government, government detaching officials. The, the uh -huh. mayor of Kumasi, Sam Pine, who is... No, I saw we, him. We have seen that yes, report. Yes, I'll come so, back to you to make the point. Yes, let's, so let's you come to, back. I'll make the point. Let's go to Ellen. Ellen, you asked me and the Ghanaian people that we are not asking what you would do when you, uh, you are retained, or asking the NDC what they will also do to keep the situation. But you have been with us for eight years. This is the government in which the president wagered his own presidency and said, I will deal with this. I put my job on the line. This is the same government that, in the lead-up to the election, your running mate is making promises of returning excavators to small-scale miners. Uh, what else should we ask you, Ellen? We have to ask well, you what you um, have been able to Madam do now. Madam Kijim, first concession, did she illegally get it? We are confusing issues here. And I was very specific when I said that we have the large-scale miners, the new months and all those people. We have the medium-scale miners. We have small-scale miners. And then we have the illegal ones that we call galamseas. Have we determined here that some pine, Madam Kijim Fua, Charles Lee Terko Terko, that she mentioned, all these people, assuming that they do have those concessions, did they get it illegally? Well, they were Are they galamseyers? Identified in the reports. Are they galamseyers? Galamseyers are people who go mining illegally. So when you were here mentioning people's name, that you didn't know that she was into mining. She's been mining for more than 20 years. 
legal mining. Even when your government was in power, she was mining. Chairman Wun to me was mining when your government was in power. So what, 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 what is their crime? Here, that they do have concessions. Are you trying to tell me that we don't have people who are affiliated to the NDC who also have concessions? The questions we should be asking is, what sort of mining are they mining? Have they gone beyond the concessions that they were given? And that is where the Minerals Commission's matter came in. The ally that you are talking about, honestly, I, do, I haven't heard about it. And I didn't know that an ally had been passed. But we have been, we've had a hung parliament for the past four years. And when it comes to other issues, we get this parliament, the, 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 the opposition standing up and holding all of us to ransom. So what happened with this one? Because I haven't heard anything about it. If there's something wrong with the LI, what happened? They didn't read it. They didn't see it. And they allowed it to pass or they raised up issues and we didn't hear. So we should be asking, asking the government. You have every right to ask us questions. But parliament is made up of both. 137, 137 plus one on our side. Mm -hmm. So what did they do about it? If there's something wrong with it? Which gives you an edge over them? You yes, but then what, what, what did they say about it? We have had other issues where they had made their, their, their positions known. They have told all of us what they first it was, and they, some and, of them, they worked out. Ellen, so with this ally, mm -hmm. honestly, I don't know what about it that you're talking about, that the Minerals Commission has been given the opportunity to give mining licenses the right to go into into protected into areas. Into forest reserves. Yes. And then what I was explaining was, I think I've heard Mr. E.C. Uh, you know, also explain mm. that there are categorization of these forest reserves and there are those that are so no-go areas. If, if I get it right, Auntie Nanaya, your problem is that we shouldn't even have passed that airline. Absolutely. That's what a lot that's of that's people are saying. That's what the CSOs are saying. Yeah, yeah, so my uh, question uh, is, CSOs what discussions CSOs went on in Parliament in for this to be passed? Meetings, yeah. So that two years down the line, we are all talking about Galamse, and the NDC want to behave as if they are angels in this matter. I will not allow them to behave. They are hypocrites. No, 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 don't interrupt. When she was speaking, you were very quiet. Let me finish. And the reason why I'm saying that they are hypocrites in this matter is you have had the opportunity eight solid years ago. You had the opportunity to work on this Galamse matter. We didn't see anything. You didn't leave any blueprints on it. Nothing. Another government comes in. The president puts his presidency on the line. Goes after people even in his government. Madam KJ, uh, uh, staff were bent because according to the, 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 the team that went there, her people had gone beyond the limit and they were putting the residue in the river. Mm. That, she wasn't mining in the river. The residue of her mining, according to them, they had put pipes and it was getting into the river. So they destroyed the whole area. Right. And this woman is the national women's organizer on the MPP. So this government went after our own people. Then you have a former president who had the opportunity, did nothing, wants to come back. He is in these mining towns. He was there in 2020 with Kwaku Bwahin and Mr. Tony Obin, former uh, 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 um, Minerals Commission boss, telling the miners that when we come, we will take your people who were legally committed for doing galamse, whether they were small boys, whether they were small girls, whether they were big boys, whether they were big girls, our laws found them guilty, put them in jail. And then you tell us that you give them amnesty. What right do you have to even talk about galamse matters? And the question I have asked, what are they going to do? What is their plan? What is their blueprint for it? They have nothing. All you're doing is calling out people's names, Casting as, uh, aspirations on people's character, running down people's businesses, no alternative. No alternative. Under this government, there's this uh, uh, machine that they brought that we, we have it, uh, the gold catches, the mercury free machines. We're sitting here. They say, Mercuduka, that you are insinuating <coughs> that he's doing galam, say that you don't have any, 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 any evidence. And his minister, Abu Jinapo, went looking for these machines to make sure that our small-scale miners are able to mine without mercury. Those machines are still there. We're going to bring in more. Dr. Bamiya is saying that we need to move all these people off the waters, off the rivers. Yes, you chase them, but at a point, you have to give them an opportunity. Small-scale mining actually employs more than one million people in this country. So what we need to do is to have systems in place that will not let them go into the river. If you go into the river, you are a criminal. And left to me, you should be shot. Mm. 
Mm. But we should also give them the opportunity to also mine right by giving them these community-based implements like the gold catcher that they can work with. Mm. Dr. Baumia is saying that we need to make sure that we add value to the, the things that we are taking out. Just recently, the refinery at PMMC was finally opened. And from next year going, according to the NPP, when we do come into power, we are not going to send our raw gold out again. These are pragmatic ways that we are looking to solve an issue. You don't have anything. You haven't told us anything. You're just insulting people. You're just bringing their companies down. You are just attacking people. What is your blueprint? Mm. I see. But, uh, you know, again, it comes, I, I, I come back to the point where I talk about it would appear that every time the N NPP is questioned about Galamse, you deflect. And then you ask, what did the NDC do? What did the NDC do? But for the past eight years, the NPP has had the mandate to be able to deal with this and deal with this concisely and effectively. But here we are having another pressure talk another round table talk uh, in this case this one is a rectangular table <laughs> on galamse and so it's only fair that the Ghanaian people ask you perhaps the galamse <coughs> issue is now indefensible for the government that you have to continually de deflect on the matter ellen because if you tell me that are you doing what? a one-on-one -on -one? <laughs> you no, spend from, so much no, time from, on from, it. from you see no, no, seriously. I, I'm spending too much time yeah. on it. I'll be fairer. Yeah. But, but Ellen will also say that when I'm on here, I don't allow no, her no, to no, talk. She doesn't at, finish. You've been looking at the time. Yeah. Ellen, then I'll come back to you so that you explain you that bit. But, but I'll move on to... You uh, spend 11 minutes on here. Is that the case? Yeah. So you've taken a pen and a paper. <laughs> <laughs> Ellen, so now you cannot say I haven't been fair with you. You have had more time than everyone else on this table. And we don't have That's time. It's only nine So, nine so Beatrice, minutes left. Beatrice, I come okay. back to you. So, yeah. Beatrice, I know you want to react to some of the things that no, Ellen has said. I actually said. don't want to. You don't want to. But, you know, in Parliament, when, uh, um, you know, Speaker uh, Sumana Bagbin made that point, he didn't say it was the NPP side. So I'd like to believe that perhaps there are also elements within the NDC who may be engaged in this. Has this been a source of concern to the government? And then also tell us, you, when you were the there, government. what did you do? I mean, to, to, to the party. Ellen, it was a slip of tongue. I yeah. apologize. They are not in government. They are not coming. So I they are not coming. Eh? No. They will say otherwise. <laughs> okay, so can I ask you to give me two of the policies Dr. Baumia said we used to fight Galamse. To use to fight Galamse. Yes. Oh, yeah. Ellen is here. Ellen can help us. No, no, us. She, she said, she, she said, you, that was no, the question you asked her. I suppose she answered that. No, she had, no, we'll come back to that. So because uh, Nana that. made the point okay. that uh, I was spending too much time on Ellen. And, so I, and you, I want to be fair ask, with everybody okay. here. So ask your question again. Uh, so again, if, if we want to talk about that, I know that in their manifesto they have spoken about regular, regularizing and ensuring that the small scale miners, uh, you know, ethically mine. Right, they have spoken about that creating a ethical mining? creating a community, you know. <laughs> what is ethical mining? Please answer my question. <laughs> okay, so you ask your question. No, so what I'm saying is that for as long as uh, the speaker did not identify and say that it is NPP uh, MPs <coughs> who are who are mining, but said that he knows there are people in this house, it presupposes that the Kobe people also on the NDC side. Is that a source of worry to, you know, the, the party? You, you see, and, and then also you tell us what you people you did see, while you went. It's a very convenient and yet lame excuse for anybody to bring in the NDC anytime we have to talk about Galamse. Huh? What is the responsibility of a government? Mm -hmm. The responsibility of a government is to fight the Galamse. It matters not who is involved in the Galamse. Or we are saying that if we get to the Galamse site and we find that the owner is NDC, we leave the owner because there are NPP people engaged in Galamse. Is that the logic? I want to understand. Is that the logic? I mean, nobody reasonable, no sensible person, excuse me to say, would make this argument. I mean, could MPs from your side be engaged nobody in Galamse? Nobody should make that argument. You know why? Mm -hmm. We have a menace that is threatening our lives. This government is complicit, affirmed by members of the government itself. And the government excuses that there are some NDC people engaged in Galamse. My goodness. 
So, so what? I don't think that's what she said. No, it's not about her. Uh, this morning, my, my is the speaker, not on speaker who said that all of speaker you are involved. said that there are people in the house engaged in galamsey. And I'm saying that we it can get the responsibility of the government to fight the people in the house, out of the house, and anywhere they are located in the fight against galamsey. So where comes in this NDC MPP? No, but but I'm saying that. Can you say here that NDC MPs are also not? I don't know of any. The reports that were submitted, the fourth estate report, uh -huh. and all those other things. Have you had any NDC's name? If you know, say it, and I'll be the first to call out. And let me say this. And this is the reason why there has to be a difference between, and everybody must differentiate. I, I want Ghanaians not to make a mistake of comparing the NDC to the MPP ever. Although we are all political party, we, the NDC, have never set out to destroy this nation as much that the MPP has done, even as contained in the Japadia document, because every government will have its excesses. Mm -hmm. Every government may have its challenges, but never would you find the NDC on a deliberate path to destroy the resources of this nation. When the NDC discovered oil, we were the political party that set up the Heritage Fund in line with the principles of intergenerational equity. That let's not spend all our oil resources and proceeds today. Let's save some for the future. Today, when we had COVID, the MPP wanted to go mm. for that which was meant for generation. So we are not the same. And Kemeni, let me say that. Never at the time, whether President Rawlings' time, President Mills, President Mahama, did you see presidential staffers engage in Galamse? Who born dog that you are the presidency or you are a political appointee under the NDC and you have the effrontery and the temerity to mine, I mean, in the forest or in the river? Did you ever hear some in all the discussion that happened between 2009 to even 2016? Did you ever hear? that appointees or party executives of the NDC were involved in Galamse, you would dare not do that. How, how unimaginable mm. it is that the man who wants to fight corruption, that the man who wants to fight Galamse, that I am following, some way, somehow, we get power, and I am supposed to be the Galamse campaign or party executive. How would he be fighting that? Mm. How would he be fighting? So let's not make this MPP NDC. It is the responsibility of every government at the time they are in power to fight Galamsey. They must be responsible enough to accept whether they have failed or they are winning the fight. You see, this Galamsey so, fight. So you tell me, eh, when <coughs> the NDC was in, was mm -hmm. in government, mm -hmm. Uh, and I hope that my producer can give us the videos yes, of the comparison. And, and I wish to play no, that no, video. I've sent it to you. No, you know where it's beaches. We also have that video already. So um, I just want to allow my producer to make that video available so that we can show it side by side. So what did you do then? So you let, know, as, let me as, show you as, what we as did. As a party in government. Let me show you what we did. The first thing we did was that we realized that some Ghanaians were using foreigners to mine or engage in illegal mining. So the NDC deported more than 12,000 Chinese out of this country, uh -huh. even before they could be found whether they were guilty or not. They deported them back to their country. The NDC embarked on what we call the Alternative Livelihood Program, where we engage people to engage in reclamation of the land by cultivating in excess of 23,000 acres of land. These stories are online for you to check. The NDC engaged in other alternative livelihood calculated to providing, I mean, sources of income to these people. And you know why the fight was not worse? Because at the time, these were not political appointees who were engaged in the galamse. These were the little, little, little people who were, you know, they were not using chamfines and... Oh, she, uh, said you, she said they were chamfines all she, the time. It, it, it is... Oh, what? Ellen, see, uh, is that not the see. case? Shamfines got into this country Please, under President Atta Mills. Don't, okay. don't, no, I wanted don't, her to... Uh, the Shamfines came under the attack. Very well. Don't, don't, so so, so don't react to that, please. When, I, I apologize. Yeah, she can make her point. You, you make your point quickly, so, so then I can come in. And let me say that, when it comes to this whole thing about the Galamse fight, we should be very worried as a people that Alistair Mattia says that the president currently 
has a friend who exports more than $40 million worth of gold monthly out of this country. Where do they get the gold to export illegally? Al Jazeera made that report and said our president was complicit in this whole Galante report. You know what the president well, that's said? That's not what they said. In what did they say? He said the he president knows the said president he was is. going to the lawyer to the president, <laughs> Kwawe Suman, is my very good friend. I'm sure this morning he's watching me. Wrote a letter and said that they will sue Al Jazeera. Indeed. It's almost a year. Where is the suit? Well, you think Al Jazeera is a local champion court? If you have ball, sue Al Jazeera. See what we are talking about, eh, Kemeni. It's a very convenient excuse for the MPP to engage in this MPP NDC. I am telling them, and I'm saying this in my capacity as the spokesperson, if there are NDC people engaged in Galamse, please arrest them. If that is what will end the fight for Galamse, mm -hmm. and you are saying that the, your excuse for destroying the water body, so let me ask you, the person of the airline, to give people the right to go into our forest reserve to mine, was this also because people in the NDC were engaged in Galamse? How convenient that excuse. And let me finally say that. This thing about parliament passing airline and the NDC people has 137, it shows that you don't understand how the legislature works. When an airline is laid before parliament, it passes by itself. Mm -hmm. So you can only prevent the laying. And with the 138, how are we supposed to prevent? prevent the lane. The man who has the responsibility mm -hmm. to prevent illegal mining and to preserve the forest has the parliamentarian who do not have the power are the ones supposed to be blamed. This can only happen in Ghana. The people it with responsibility. I hope this is also not part of the Russia-Ukraine excuse. This is a third excuse. A government that can never be responsible for itself no, is me, never me. guilty of anything. They do nothing. They see, I, I, you know, the worst thing. In concluding, Napo, who is an embarrassment of a running mate, who anytime he speaks. How do you say that? Yes, let me show you. I can give you an example. Anytime he speaks, they have to come and explain. Yesterday, Napo no, said... No, Beatrice, that's too hard. Well, uh, what's hard? That's too hard what's to harsh? call him an embarrassment. Do you know what he called Mahama? Do you know what he called uh, President Mahama? So are Mahama? we equalizing our I'm, not, I'm asking you. I'm asking what is the measure of harshness? What is the measure of harshness? Are you not embarrassed that since the... Rani May started speaking. You cannot tell me one policy proposition he has made. Every time he speaks, the campaign team has to bring a statement to explain. Or you are not angry Very enough. Well. Well. Kemeni, your tap that when you open, you cannot get pure water. And you have to get water mixed with mud. You are not angry. That all of us, our lives are being threatened. The man went to tell the Galamse people that we will return your excavators to you. Mm -hmm. The campaign team, feeling embarrassed, released the statements and said it's false. We are still waiting for the original video. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, just, just quickly on the, you know, the forest reserve issue I had raised earlier. Uh, th this is from uh, Seth Gopé from the Fourth Estate. And Ellen, I'm sure you've seen the, uh, uh, you know, investigative report on, on, the, on the mining uh, in this country. Before you go in that... She called my my my, my running mate give, an embarrassment. I'd give you. You want moment. us to get into an embarrassing no, running mate? No, I I think I checked her on. That. You didn't. I did. She should retract it. I told. Otherwise, we'll get into embarrassing running mates in this country. No, we we cannot. Do, do you that. want us to do that? No, we we won't do that here. Then I ask you to we, ask we, her we to retract. You can criticize the man, but you don't insult him. I, I have, I have checked on that. No, hang on. You are insulting. You are insulting. I have insulting. checked on that. I have checked on that. So if you want to get into embarrassing no, moments. No, 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 let's not equalize. I've checked on that. And embarrassing flag bearers and their running mates. No, no, no. I've checked on that. You want us to do that here? I told her she can't say that. I'm very measured in what I say. She can't say that. There is nothing embarrassing. Indeed, indeed. So so this is what this is what he's saying about the, you know, mining in the forest reserves. He talked about... Concessions have been granted in at least four globally significant bio biodiversity areas. And those are the places that I even said that the Minerals Commission had indicated that they couldn't go at all. Those were uh, no-go yes, areas. He talks about the Draw River, uh, yeah, the Boeing Tunnel, New South, and Tano Ahria, all in the western region. Four others are also awaiting approval. And then he also says that even for production uh, forest reserves only 2% is allowed for any form of activity, including mining. But today, our Minerals Commission has given over 80% in some cases. Ellen, you react to that, but it's time for Nana to talk. Nana, 
You, you, ha you have all the minutes. You, you want to do one on one? No, I know. Now no, you have all the minutes, I promise. <laughs> you see, <laughs> Nana is overwhelmed. <laughs> when the wicked is in authority, the people perish. When you have governments that does not think about the people, the people are in trouble. My dear, mm -hmm. this issue that we are talking about, we, we are treating it as if it's very trivial. We are, everybody is talking. There's no action whatsoever. Today, you see, whenever the priest comes out, in all the <coughs> biblical days, then you, it means there is trouble. Today, certain, the conclave of bishops and archbishops have come out with a statement, being led by Archbishop Duncan Williams, Duncan Williams that the government should ban illegal mining. I will extend it to, to all mining activities. Germany. Ghana is at a crossroads. And everything that you hear, they will tell you that if we deal with this, we are going to lose votes. Do you know how many votes we lost in the mining areas in 2020? We are not going to do that again. You see, I want to see a government that would say that no matter what it takes, I will do this to save my people. I want to see a president whose love is for the people, but not for the seat that he is sitting on. Uh -huh. Kemini, I'm telling you, you see, the selfishness has become so much and the greed that they forget that they are ruling over individuals. And that if you employ somebody to do a job for you, and the person, he or she is more important than you, that is where we are today. Because we go a queue in the morning and the rain and the sun and the all kinds of uh, um, weather conditions and we vote for people to come and take over government and rule over us. Mm -hmm. And it is very, very sad that we are at this point. And as if nobody cares. You see, Ghana, they will talk after a while, they will forget about it. And I am saying that if His Excellency Baumia has um plans to deal with this issue if his excellency baumia has an antidote he shouldn't put this antidote in a manifesto he should start dealing with it now because this uh -huh. is a crisis situation if i do it today what will i the, do tomorrow this is not a situation <laughs> that you can hold on this is not the what other policies that you can hold on this is a tomorrow? crisis situation so being in government having the opportunity to affect policy Whatever he has to do, he should do it. It should not be in a book lying somewhere waiting to be implemented. It should be done now. Because this is a now situation. This is not a situation for the future. Mm -hmm. Look at the water that the woman showed to us. I mean, it is a serious, serious matter that we are dealing with. Mm -hmm. This is not something that we should joke with. And anybody who has um, a solution to the problem... Yes, you can ban it. This law they are talking about. I me, mean, I've been a public servant too. When people want to do things, I mean, all they tell you is that, oh, they add on other things, add ons. But the actual thing that they want to do is hidden in the law, in the LI. So now it is there that they are saying that there are certain areas you can't go. Who is monitoring? No, I mean, based on what he sent me. It means that they they have gone beyond the two percent. They have I am even eighty percent. I am saying that who is monitoring what is going on? You see, Kemi, I have never heard the president, the vice president, hmm? taking a helicopter, taking an aerial view of what is happening. Have you ever heard today? His Excellency Nanado Danko Kufuadu. He has a few days to go. Have you ever heard that today he is taking an aerial view? Of all the Galamse areas, we know that place is devastated so badly. Maybe he cannot walk around. Oh, maybe the drones, the drones will help with yes, that. Yes, it is not safe. Mm. But a helicopter, he, he has access to every equipment that he wants in this nation. He can get the air force to put him in a helicopter to have an aerial view.
of what is going on. So he sees it at first and not by pictures. You see, Kemini, when you see it at first and the Brim River, when you are going to Kumasi, mm. is on the way. When you get to Konongo, the way the land is devastated is open. They are there openly doing it. Who imports uh, uh, um, these excavators? When they come into the system, who allows it to come in? Is it not the Ghana? Is it not the port? Do you get me? Mm -hmm. And they are always burning excavators. And I say that that activity is to hide evidence. Because the owner of that excavator, those boys on the, on the river, they don't have money to buy excavators. Mm. They don't have money to buy excavators. You don't even have money to buy an excavator. Mm -hmm. So who brings it? Under whose name does the excavators come in? Even if it is hidden, the motherboard will tell you who owns this excavator. Why don't we go after the owners, the faceless people behind the scenes. Why don't you go after them? Has the president ever, the, His Excellency Baumia, has he ever? I Me, mean, I don't like talking about the past, though. So sometimes it breaks my heart that we are always going going to the past. Uh -huh. This government can go and go to Kwame Nkrumah. <laughs> they can go as far as Kwame Nkrumah. Do you get me? And go. me I, I, I don't like going to the past. We are being sung out of the studio. But I don't know why we are being sung out of the studio. You will create problems for us today. You you finish your point quickly yeah, because I'm done. I, you're done. So, so okay. I, yes, I'm done. I, I think that. I mean, because we are used to this sound. Maybe you are not. Immediately, this sound is counter. It means we are out yes, of here. Yes. Uh, so whether you are on or off, you are done. So you can't continue. A, it is signaling to you. I told you that your time is eight thirty. You. Nana, today it looks like you are my producer here. Yes, I am. <laughs> I am the prefect of this. Set. Yeah, I, I have been told. Uh -huh, so. You are the prefect of the set, so yes. thank you for keeping time uh -huh. for but me. We are for Ellen, I'm, I'm afraid you can't make any more reactions because I, I had don't a, need to make any I, more reactions. I wanted to ask you about the minerals commission. We don't want to go the into the past, and somebody from the past says, "Give me the future." You think we should ask that person to a few questions? What is it going to be in the future? What what the government? We shouldn't, we shouldn't go into the past, but somebody from the past has picked his box and says, "Give me the future." <laughs> what is he going to do? Elena Madeko, uh, Beatrice, and uh, Nanaya Achepe. We are suffering. Not, is, me, I'm even scared mm. now. You said if, we should go. Even Perfect. when I get a headache, I'm I'm uh. scared. <laughs> And we should we make past things in the past <laughs> and move on into the future. <laughs> Ellen, mm. thank you so much for coming, uh, ladies. Uh, it's been a pleasure coming your way. Cookie continues with this program. Uh, thank you so much. Bye-bye.